Take a deep breath in. As you breathe in, breathe in a resourceful feeling of calm and relaxation. And as you exhale, just allow your eyelids to close. That's it. I want you to feel a heaviness around your eyebrows and eyelids. As you do so, notice your breathing slows down. The slower you breathe, the more opportunity you have to breathe deeper. Notice where in your body you feel tension. Sometimes it can be the neck, the shoulders, the jaw, the forehead. But as you breathe in, imagine breathing in a feeling of relaxation. Breathing in that resourceful relaxation, melting away the tension. And as you exhale, feeling that tension leave your body. I want you to get a sense that there's relatively few things the human body actually needs. The body can survive weeks without food, days without sleep. Sometimes two or three days without water. But I want you to get a sense that the human body can only survive a few minutes without breath. So as you breathe in and breathe out, I want you to imagine how difficult it would be to breathe without lungs. Take a deep breath in and hold that breath. As you imagine holding your breath, having an equivalency of not having the use of lungs. And notice, even a few seconds becomes difficult. A minute becomes challenging, even longer perhaps impossible, and then just exhale, releasing that breath, take another deep breath in. And I want you to make an evaluation that there is very little that exists that is more valuable than your lungs. If someone offered you an insane amount of money, millions, even billions, but you had to give your lungs in exchange. I want you to imagine how easy it would be to turn down impossibly large amounts of money because you value your lungs more than all of that wealth. As you breathe in, notice the deeper you breathe, the more oxygen you can breathe in. As you allow yourself to feel immense gratitude for your lungs. That is the organ, the device necessary for you to extract oxygen from the air around you to turn it into the ultimate, most precious life force. I want you to imagine if you had something else valuable, a priceless piece of art, the world's most expensive car, what you would do to protect that artwork or that car. As you breathe in and breathe out, realize your lungs are more precious than that car or that artwork. 
if you had a car worth millions? How angry would you be if someone scratched it? Put the wrong fuel in the tank? Got a knife and tore the leather in the seats? I want you to feel that there is something within you that values your lungs more than anything else. And that level of protection against pollution to your lungs becomes something you could take pride in. The equivalent of having these priceless lungs and smoking is to have a priceless piece of artwork and start scribbling with a pen on that precious canvas or to have that expensive car and just spray paint the paintwork or damage the engine with a sledgehammer. I want you to feel like you are a custodian a protector, a knight in shining armor of your lungs. You are there to protect them. I want you to make a promise right now to your lungs that you will make up for the damage that's already been caused by eating well, drinking well, and doing the very things that increase lung capacity. Cardio activity, fitness, going out in nature and breathing in fresh air. You've had something valuable and you took it for granted. You allowed it to be polluted, but sometimes The ability to put things right, to make up for a mistake, to atone for a previous grievance can feel amazing. As you breathe in and breathe out, let's go back in time. I want you to go back to a moment where you can see yourself running a half marathon, see yourself doing it with someone you care about, see the energy, see then a time where you were giving something precious and valuable to your body and to your lungs, and your lungs appreciated it. I want you to get a sense then, when you do good things, the law of reciprocity means you get good things back. Back then, when you were doing good things for your lungs, your body was rewarding you with motivation and focus, energy and alertness, confidence and self-esteem, and see that version of you. See yourself striding, breathing in. See a fit, strong, healthy version of you and then step into that version of you. Feel how good it feels. And sometimes when you're running long distances, your body can just run all by itself on autopilot. Your mind can drift into daydreams. You find a pace and a rhythm and your heart starts maintaining that heart rate. Your legs move in the same rhythm and you're able to run without thinking. So imagine running that half marathon, feeling how you felt at the time and thinking of a moment of regret. Your very first cigarette. Imagine going back in time and observing a child just 13 or 14 years old imagine you're there at your current age going back in time seeing 
a child being goaded, encouraged, pressured to try something, something addictive, something that would lead them down a path that would pollute the very lungs that are so precious. But I want you to rewind things to just 15 minutes before that child version of you was offered your very first cigarette. And I want you to have a man-to-man conversation with the younger version of you. Expressing everything that you've experienced caused by years of smoking. This child doesn't know what the future brings, but you do. I want you to feel that you can share wisdom to a version of you that didn't know any better. But I want you to imagine, given that this is just your imagination, that you can telepathically project moments of Regret, frustration, times that you've wheezed or coughed, times that you felt it was detrimental to your health, moments of deep sadness while you happen to be smoking, knowing that the smoking didn't make it any better. Project all of these memories into the memory of a child that hasn't experienced them yet. Coach this younger version of you on how to deal with these people that have a vested interest in seeing that version of you become a smoker. Then switch perspectives, feel that you are now in the body of that child knowing everything that you know about your future and see the same people that try to encourage you to take that very first cigarette but knowing everything you now know feel you have a choice a choice to take a different path And knowing what you now know, feel what you would do differently in that same situation. And when you feel that you could imagine a different history, a different past, let me know by nodding your head. And if you feel that this past would take your life into a better future, also let me know by nodding your head. That's it. I want you to follow that timeline to see how things would have been different throughout your teenage years. Maybe you would have accomplished more in sport and fitness. Maybe you would have had additional motivation to try other things too. I want you to experience the good things that come when you don't have this thing dragging you back. They say the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago, but the second best time is now. To feel like you're moving into the present and the same decision you could have made back then you're making right now. That you are a non-smoker. Not a judgmental non-smoker that can't stand other people smoking, but a non-smoker that respects if other people want to smoke, but chooses not to smoke yourself. You are a non-smoker that doesn't want to smoke, doesn't need to smoke. You don't need to smoke if you go to a bar on your own feel that you don't need it. In fact, imagine three months from now, six months from now, you're in a city you don't know, with people you don't know. And imagine walking into a bar 
where your inner dialogue simply says, I don't need to. Feel a sense of pride and confidence that comes from taking control of your own life. To steer it in a direction. Because if that teenage version of you never started smoking to begin with, would you really need to smoke as an adult? Just to go into a bar in a city you don't know. So feel empowered, confident. You can be you wherever you are. Go forwards in time and feel. Something happens in your life that brings about sadness. But this is a version of you that is a non-smoker that doesn't want to smoke, doesn't need to smoke. And just evaluate how you would handle that situation of tough times. Maybe stress, anxiety, sadness or grief. And yet smoking doesn't feel like it would help. In fact, smoking feels like it would be a burden on your back, dragging you backwards to a life that you chose that you didn't want. And you could always choose to be a smoker. Just come up with some justification, narrative, an excuse and you're free to do that whenever you want but that would be like those other kids coming up with nonsense reasons to get you started sometimes you can just call a spade a spade and see if what it is a lie Bullshit you don't need that takes your life in a direction you don't want to go. Breathe in and breathe out and then observe a future like you're looking at someone else. I want you to imagine that you could imagine that right now your life splits into two. A version of you that goes forward in life as a non-smoker that doesn't want to smoke and a version of you that dabbles in non-smoking sometimes smoking, sometimes doesn't and imagine following both paths simultaneously like a parallel universe two versions of you living different realities and you be the adjudicator decide which life seems more desirable? Which one has more happiness, confidence, health, and vitality? Which one seems more in control, fitter, more sporty? Which one seems like a better role model to the people you love the most? Which one seems to have more freedom? Which one seems to be more in control of their life, particularly in tough times? When people wallow in moments of sadness, it's because somehow they're playing a victim. And maybe in one of these realities, it's not the absence of tough times but the resources to cope better with tough times. You don't need a crutch. You don't need a chemical, cancer-inducing, synthetic tool to give you the illusion of control. Why not choose actual control, actual decisions, and just follow both timelines to their distant future? See a version of you in your 90s, still sporty and healthy and happy. And perhaps in the smoking timeline, you never quite make it to that age. I want you to see someone you care about the most 
visiting a gravestone, perhaps even seeing an age next to your name on that gravestone, the version of you that could have made a choice but didn't. And when you've decided which timeline is the timeline you're committed to, let me know by nodding your head. Step into that version of you. Feel like you're physically walking into that version of you. Becoming that identity. It's not something you do or don't do. It's who you are at your core. When you were 12 years old, you were a non-smoker that didn't want to smoke. In a different reality, never introduced to cigarettes, you were always a non-smoker that didn't want to smoke. You found different ways of dealing with different situations, socially, emotionally, physically. And feel that you are righting a wrong by becoming a non-smoker now you're taking a moment of regret and putting things right you're giving a gift to that 13 year old version of you that didn't feel like they had a choice and back then maybe they didn't feel like they have a choice but you have a choice now and if you're willing to choose to be that non-smoker who doesn't smoke doesn't want to smoke wouldn't consider smoking no matter what the circumstances are takes pride in honoring their best self and the childlike version of them still there inside them let me know by nodding your head and feel a lock is being unlocked with a key to open up powerful resources aligned with this new identity the very resources that would enable you to be more active to be happier to go to the gym more to hike all those constant interruptions with cigarette breaks all that time you're given as a gift all that vitality I want you to get a sense that the money you save from not smoking you're going to set aside to do things that enrich the quality of your life you're going to spend that money anyway but now you're going to do things you wouldn't have considered doing but will do now because it's a gift for yourself Breathe in and breathe out as you harness that new identity. Feel like you're about to return to the present as you take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your nose. Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, connect fully into the present moment. I will now count from one to ten and when you awaken, you will awaken fully committed to being a non-smoker that doesn't want to smoke, doesn't need to smoke, has no desire to smoke at all, starting to count, one, two, three, waking up, four, five, six, more alert, seven, eight, open your eyes, open your eyes, nine, ten, wide awake, wide awake, wide awake.